close this weekend here at Donington Park. The final rounds of what has been a very, very closely fought 2022 campaign. Uh, the championship very much going down to the wire with three drivers in contention. Uh, not a huge amount of points between them. We reckon about 14 points covering Harry Foster, Charles Clark, and Matthew Armstrong at the top of the points table. So it should be uh, a very, very interesting race, this one. Uh, those gaps did all go out yesterday, though, because that was the order in which they finished. Harry Foster got himself uh, another race victory. 3.1 seconds to the good he was uh, over Charles Clark in second position. And Matthew Armstrong, who rounded out uh, the podium finishes yesterday. But uh, there's nothing to say that that is going to be uh, the order that they finish in here this morning, because uh, the track conditions are not quite ideal. It has dried out more or less now, but a few damp patches still around. Cold tyres uh, will be a factor here. Uh, and for Charles and Matthew, they know they really have to try and beat Harry Foster in this race. They need to be taking points out of him, uh, not letting that gap grow anymore, because you only get 10 points uh, for winning a race in this championship. So uh, there are two races to go, but only 20 points in total. And it's only a two-point difference between finishing first and second and finishing second and third. So um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to overcome uh, a deficit of 14 points or so, as it is for Charles Clark, and a further five points back for Matthew Armstrong in third place. Cars making their way out onto their green flag lap. It's not just the overall championship fight either uh, that we need to be watching out for because the AM category is actually even closer coming into the weekend. Only four points separated Carl Cavers from uh, Rupert Lassler. But again, yesterday it was Cavers who got the win and so extended his championship lead. Uh, this is the way they'll line up on the grid for this one, though. It's uh, taken from Britain, second fastest lap time to qualify. Harry Foster on pole, Matthew Armstrong, though, second. So he's ahead of Charles Clark. Interestingly, he starts fourth on the grid. Steve Roberts is up there in the red line racing car, uh, third place in the uh, on the uh, grid, fourth place in the championship with Steve Roberts. But now, mathematically, only just still in contention for the title. Toby Trice and uh, Matt Greenwood share the third row of the grid. The SVP late sport driver Toby Trice uh, and Matt Greenwood running under the race lab awning, and then row from there fourth. Uh, is running by Mark and front runners. So Carl Cavers, championship leader there now by a slightly increased margin. Five points now his advantage over Rupert Laslett. But it's not Laslett who starts alongside him. John White actually is second on the AM grid. And then on row number two of that AM grid, the fifth row overall, Jason Pelosi and Rupert Laslett. So again, we've got uh, fourth place within the AM class for one of our championship contenders. Raceway Motorsport drivers got some work to do. David Sterling and Timothy Kresic are next. Redline Racing ahead of Par Motorsport. Uh, and uh, that will be the back row of Grid. So, two classes to watch out for. The car's exactly the same. It's only the driver uh, category that differs from uh, one to the other. Uh, but you only score points within your class. So, if an AM driver were to get ahead of some of the pros, it doesn't actually make a difference to the points. So, uh, two completely separate races going on, essentially. And uh, both of them, championships that could mathematically be wrapped up in this race, but it's far more likely uh, within the AM class, at least, to go down to uh, race number three later on. So for the championship to be won in uh, the pro class, at least, Harry Foster, like I said, he is uh, coming into this race nine points clear of Charles Clark. There'll be 11 points still available after this race, a win plus a fastest lap point available. So Harry Foster, if he can outscore Charles by a few points in this race, should provisionally become the champion with a race to spare. But uh, that is why um, we're going to see a real charge here, I think, from Charles Clark from the outside of uh, row number two, the orange and black and white car, uh, trying to, uh, to march his way toward the front. He has to try and narrow that gap uh, and certainly doesn't want to be finishing more than a position or two behind Harry. So Grid then pulls into position, second place on the grid there, uh, Matthew Armstrong in a, a slightly more middle of the road position than he probably should be. But anyway, the green flag is waved at the back and uh, we have got 20 minutes on the clock then. The penultimate round of the Porsche Visit Cayman Islands uh, sprint challenge, Great Britain gets in the way and from pole position, Harry Foster charges towards Redgate Corner. He makes a good start, but the challenge is on already. Matthew Armstrong trying to go right around the outside of him. Hasn't been a great start for Charles Clark, unfortunately. So the man second in the championship is joint sixth as they come out of Redgate Corner and on the grass is Armstrong. He loses a position, maybe loses two places. Steve Roberts goes through and Toby Trice, I think that was into third place. So this is a dream scenario for the championship leader. Harry Foster's got the advantage into the old hairpin and his championship rivals have both 
lost a number of positions. Uh, there goes Carl Cavers, the Beluga car. He's actually uh, leading the Amcast, but got ahead of a couple of uh, the pros there in the early stages. Matt Greenwood, I think that is directly ahead of him, the number 20 um, six car, as they, uh, sorry, five car, sorry, as they turn through McLean's corner for the first time. So very good start then for both of our class championship leaders. And right now, Harry Foster is in a championship winning position, but uh, an awful lot to still play out over the 20 minute race. And the exhibition straight their head then for the first time and uh, towards the braking zone at the Fogarty S's. And there you can see um, how many places Charles Clark lost. He is down in seventh overall, well, that's sixth within the class. Uh, and stuck behind at the moment, the Adam class leader, Carl Cavers, who you can do with finding a way past into the Melbourne hairpin. He's looking at the inside, but Cavers is late on the brakes. He doesn't have to let uh, Clark through. They may be fighting in different classes, but uh, there's nothing to say that the Adam drivers have to get out of the way of the pros. Carl Cavers clearly has no intention of doing so, despite the headlight flashing going on from Clark behind him. So through the Goddard Temple, they go big slide there for Toby Trice in the number 11 car in third place. Now he has got uh, Matthew Armstrong all over him as they head down the pit straight. Bit of weaving there to try and get some warmth in the tyres for Toby. He defends the middle ground in the braking zone, and that might just give Armstrong a better exit from the corner. Toby Trice who was the champion of the GT, uh, GT, GT Academy last year. Uh, those are thinking or two about defending a position, and he did it uh, successfully there. The red gate corner is holding third place as they plunge downhill through the Craner curves, that spectacular sequence of corners for the second time in this race. So within the pro class then, Foster leads Steve Roberts second. Now Roberts is mathematically still a championship contender, but would have to win both the remaining races and hope that Harry Foster didn't score any points. So there is some incentive here for Roberts to go after Harry Foster, but it is a very slim chance that he has of beating Harry to the championship. This battle for third is definitely the one to focus on for now though. Tony Trice and Matthew Armstrong nose to tail as they come out onto the exhibition straight. Further back, I noticed Charles Clark still hasn't got past Carl Cavers. There's a, an argument to suggest that Carl really ought to be moved up into the pro class if he sticks around next year, because he's hanging on with the pros right now. And as they bounce their way over the curve through the Fonzie S's, he's still in front of Charles Clark, who sits second in the points, but needless, needless to say, he would not be second in the points if things finished as they are now. This time, though, he does commit to the inside at the hairpin, and he's going to get past Carl Cavers. Once he was on the inside, Cavers wasn't going to fight that one too hard, but nor was he going to roll over and put the indicator on, uh, and wave him through. So who does then go Charles Clark? That is another position gained, but it's not any extra points because that was an AM driver that he passed. Carl Cavers, of course, on course to further extend his championship lead in the AM class. Uh, Rupert Laslett is running second, though, so I don't think this would be enough for Cavers to wrap up the championship. There is Laslett, the green fronted car, second in the class. Third place, the blue machine, number 17. Uh, that's actually just been a change. Laslett getting himself ahead of John White on that lap and starting to gap him already. Fourth position within the class number 86, which is Timothy Creswick. Drops down into the, uh, the old hairpin. Shuffling there in the mid pack. Harry Foster one second clear at the head of the field. And this perhaps is the next overtake that could happen. Toby Trice feeling the pressure from Matthew Armstrong. Armstrong gets a good exit there from McLean's. Peaks to the inside. Can't get that one done. And so instead, takes the wide line into Coppice, tries to get the better exit, but Toby Trice was having none of it, immediately pulled right to cover that one off. And that was really clever driving by Toby. He's driving down the middle of the road, really driving in the mirrors more than he's looking out of the windscreen right now, because he knows that he's not close enough to attack the cars ahead. It's far more important that he keeps Armstrong behind him. Top two trading purple sectors on this lap, by the way. So Steve Roberts hasn't given up his chase of Harry Foster. As Toby Trice once again sits on the inside line into the Melbourne hairpin, holds on to this third position. Making their way up into the braking zone at Goddard. There, Charles Clark now on the tail of Matt Greenwood. So this is uh, the fifth position, and this is for points. And there's been contact, and there is damage. There is damage on Armstrong's car. Matthew Armstrong's got into the back of Toby Trice. Bodywork rubbing on both cars as they come down the pit straight. The right front of Armstrong's, the left rear of Trice. And that is off for Armstrong, and there's fluid on the track. Off into the barriers goes Marcus Armstrong, and that is surely now his championship done. Did Charles Clark go off? K was his sideways as well, but I did see Clark was uh, slipping and sliding on the fluid as well. It must be a damaged radiator on the front of Armstrong's car. Porsches, remember, notorious for that. The radiator hanging right out over the front axle. Any sort of frontal contact can uh, get uh, radiator fluid all over the track. 
and it almost caught out Charles Clark, but there you can see the 77 car is still going. Uh, he's dropped back some way, though, from the cars ahead. There, though, is Matthew Armstrong. He's in the gravel. He's out of the race, and now surely out of the championship. Now, this was the contact. Wow, went right up over the back of Trice's car. It was a big hit. No wonder it's broken the radiator, and that smoke we can see is actually fluid coming out of the radiator, being uh, laid all over the track, and that caught some people out at Redgate Corner, with Armstrong sliding off on his own fluid into the barriers. Now, Toby Trice surely is carrying damage as well. We can see the bodywork rubbing, but the left rear suspension must have taken a hit uh, with that contact at Goddard's, so his time in the race could well be short-lived. Uh, meanwhile, fastest lap has been set by Steve Roberts. He's back to within three quarters of a second of the race leader now, uh, although he's losing a few tenths on this next lap. Right then, drama and uh, championship implications and all of that as well. That little uh, moment for Cavers on the fluid as well has allowed Rupert Laslett to catch him now. So that's the fight for the AM class lead. And remember, those two are fighting for a championship too. Out of Goddard's they come, nose to tail. Now that fluid is presumably still going to be on the track. There are yellow flags and a live snatch vehicle in the gravel trap as well, but uh, with a slippery surface down here, I really don't like the idea of them carrying on at racing speed. And why are we trying to overtake them? The yellow flags around goes Rupert Laslett. That was contact from Creswick behind. They're both in the gravel trap and under double waved yellow flags. That is not going to go down well at all. That is damage now to the right rear corner of Laslett's car as well. Gravel all over the road. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to say to describe what we just saw there, but anyway, it's Laslett's championship taking a big hit as well, and out goes Creswick with damage to the front of his car. Here's the replay. Yellow flags are out clear as day, and yet for some reason Creswick goes up the inside. I think he thought that Laslett was going wide on the fluid or something, but he wasn't. He turned into the corner, contact made not once but twice, and big damage done to both cars, and that now could well spell the end for uh, Rupert Laslett's championship because he's pulling off on the Craner curves, uh, and uh, Rupert Laslett out of the race. So... Harry Foster leads the way. Uh, that is Toby Trice's car dismantling itself, I think, as that bodywork rubbing on the left rear corner gets worse and worse. The tyre, though, is still inflated, I think, somehow. Uh, but when the geometry of that left rear corner is as it should be, is anyone's guess. There goes Carl Cavers. He's now got ahead of uh, Trice as well, the AM-class leader. Uh, Foster leads by only three tenths, by the way. So Steve Roberts has really closed in uh, on the race. In fact, he's got ahead. Roberts has got the lead. They're side by side into the yellow flag zone. But Roberts was ahead at the line. And Foster's gone back through on the inside line. There are definitely still yellow flags out, and I'm almost certain uh, that um, Steve Roberts was ahead going into that yellow flag zone. He certainly was ahead at the line, but only by 33 thousandths of a second. So Harry Foster's gone through, but if that was deemed to be an overtake under yellow flags, then he'll have a penalty coming his way for sure. Down through the old hairpin then. Foster leading, but Steve Roberts is the quicker of the two. He's caught him very, very quickly over the last couple of laps. Did briefly get ahead at the start of this lap, and now he needs to try and do it again. Into McLean's corner they go, onto the brake. Steve Roberts, former uh, Mazda MX-5 champion, and or race winner, I should say, and BMW one-make champion. He's a very experienced one-make racer. This is uh, probably the highest profile championship that he's raced in, but he's been getting better and better every time he goes out on track, and he is now very much challenging for this race victory. He's all over Foster as they head down the exhibition straight into the braking zone at the Fogarty S's, and Harry Foster retains the lead for now. I'm amazed uh, we didn't go safety car for the incidents at Redgate Corner, but I think they've all now been cleared, so there should now uh, be green flag back green flags back out when we get on to the uh, end of this lap but Steve Roberts may have made the move before then because he's going around the outside of Foster at the Melbourne hair been no grip out there though and so uh, he actually loses a bit of time on the acceleration out of the corner in the background Matt Greenwood is third look he's got Charles Clark all over him so they're pairing off at the front now two fighting for the lead two of them debating third position and a championship contender involved in either of those battles. It's the orange and black car of Harry Foster, though, who leads them back across the line once more. We, I think, do now have green flags, although the slippery surface flag is, of course, still out at Redgate to warn the drivers about that radiator fluid that is down right on the racing line as well. And through Redgate they go. Look at the gravel on the, and the debris on the exit of the corner. They have done a good job, though, the marshals, to get the cars out of harm's way. That was the main thing. So good job, as always, by the British Marshals to get uh, the track more or less race ready again. We move into the second half of this race. It's still a very close battle for the lead. That's Toby Trice out of the race. That's not a great surprise given the whack that that car took from Matthew Armstrong a few laps ago, which sort of 
triggered all of that craziness. And that leaves us with eight drivers still in the race. Four pros and four ams. Uh, Foster the leader still. Uh, and we're going to see, I think, now the change for the lead. So uh, this was uh, Steve Roberts then. Takes the wide line into Goddard. There's a bit of a slip on the exit for Harry Foster. And so Roberts gets the run. He is definitely ahead at the line. And then you're straight into a yellow flag zone. So Roberts made the move legally. My question is whether the retaliation, if you like, from Foster at Redgate was legal. Uh, and that, thankfully, is not a decision that I have to make. That goes down to the clerk of the course, who I'm sure uh, will be monitoring that. And uh, we will uh, keep you news on that later on in the day if it becomes relevant. Uh, we've had a change for third. Charles Clark now ahead of Matt Greenwood. So Charles Clark then into a podium place. Uh, I haven't had a chance to do the maths on, on exactly what this means for the championship, but with Foster in the lead, he would score 10 points. The fastest lap right now is going to Robert, so it's just the 10 points for Foster, uh, whilst Charles Clark the third would score six points. So it would go out by a further four, and I think that would be enough to provisionally give Harry Foster the championship, but that's very provisional now uh, with a potential investigation uh, over his head. Carl Cavers, meanwhile, leads the AM class. Now, of course, Rupert Laslett's out of the race, so this one's a little bit simpler to work out. This should be enough now, as long as he stays on the road, uh, for Carl Cavers to wrap up the AM championship because he had a, a handful of points, seven or so points in hand coming into the race, and uh, he's clearly going to take that over the magic 11-point barrier uh, if he wins the class. So, Foster then. Holding on for now, and Steve Roberts may or may not be aware of the question mark over Foster's overtake on him. So if he is aware, then he may choose to sit behind Harry and um, do his arguing off the track. But he'd rather win the race on the track, of course, uh, by finding a way past Harry. And he, I think, has the pace to do so. Good run through the chicane there, and he's going to look to the inside line uh, on the run into the Melbourne hair. But he might just have an overlap as well. Harry Foster knows he doesn't need to win the race for the championship. And I think he'll be sensible to let um, the Steve Roberts car through. He does, but Roberts runs wide at the apex. And so Foster, for the second time, reclaims the lead from Steve. Uh, they are, by the way, five seconds or so ahead of Charles Clark in third, but Clark was three tenths quicker than the leader in sector one and another three tenths quicker in sector two. So he is closing on these two. We'll see what the lap times are then. Foster comes through with a 36.5, a 36.6 for Roberts, and Charles Clark does a 35.7. So he was eight tenths quicker than the leader, but he's 4.8 seconds off the lead uh, with only seven minutes to go. So unless these two really start tripping over each other, I'm not convinced that Charles Clark is going to get there. So if Foster were to finish second, he would only outscore, no, he's still outscoring Clark, isn't he, by two points. That might actually just be enough to keep Clark in it. So I think if uh, if Steve Roberts can steal this win from Harry Foster, Charles Clark might still mathematically have a shot at the championship going into the final race. But that is a big if. Um, Steve Roberts, whilst he's been ahead of Harry a couple of times in this race, hasn't been able to stay there for very long. And so... Certainly, uh, Harry Foster has the advantage for now, but uh, how is the remaining portion of this race going to play out? Beautiful blue skies over the Donington Park Grand Prix circuit as they head down towards the chicane. Uh, some great vantage points to watch from or get a few pictures if you're spectating here at Donington, which a lot of people are today. Down onto the Grand Prix loop they go, then the Melbourne loop into the braking zone at the Melbourne hairpin. Harry Foster, for now, seems to be keeping Steve Roberts at arm's length, doesn't he? Roberts uh, just not quite able to challenge into the Melbourne loop this time. Black and white warning flag now going out for number 17. That's the man second in the AM class, John White. That's just a warning at the moment for exceeding track limits, but if he does it again, he will be given a penalty. And that would at first be a five-second penalty, and that can go up in five-second increments the more times you do it. So uh, he's running second in the AM class. He's only 1.6 seconds, though, uh, ahead of the number 27 car of David Sterling, who was a late entry this weekend. And so a five-second penalty would cost him a place in the class. Apart from the fight for the overall race lead, that is the closest battle out there as well. White to Sterling, second and third within AM. And actually, this lead gap is now starting to creep out. Steve Roberts perhaps has had the best of his tyres. Uh, and uh, Harry Foster now looking the stronger of the two. He was three tenths faster on the previous lap. And they were both still slower than Charles Clark. Cl Charles Clark did a 135.7, the leader of 35.8, so only a tenth gained. It was a 36-1 for Steve Roberts. Might have just been a mistake, though, because Roberts is starting to close back in again on this lap. Through the coppice they go. This is the fight that I mentioned just now for uh, second place 
in the AM class, white to Sterling, what did I say, well, 1.6 seconds, well, it came down to nine tenths at the end of that lap. So, what a big wobble on the brakes there for uh, John White as he heads through that brilliant sequence of corners, through the Craner curves, the old hairpin, and then the gradual climb up through Starkeys, through Schwantz, into the braking zone at McLean's corner, and visibly more speed being carried by David Sterling in the all-white car behind, so he's definitely closing in. And of course, this might be to do with the fact that uh, White's got this fire, this uh, warning for exceeding track limits. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because he leaves the door wide open into Coppice Corner, breaks strangely early, uh, and the change of position happens anyway. So Sterling through into second in the class. This for the overall race lead now with three minutes and 50 seconds to go. So another three laps potentially we might squeeze into this one, two or three. Uh, and Harry Foster has not shaken off Steve Roberts. Roberts faster on that lap by about four tenths of a second. And he is certainly still in the fight for the victory. Uh, through the Melbourne hairpin then, David Sterling having got second place in the class, uh, looking to try and pull away, and uh, that's not going to help. They both uh, are breaking themselves slightly through the Fogarty S's, but Sterling goes straight through the gravel, and um, actually had White not made a mistake of his own, he might have been able to capitalise on that and take second place away. Take it back, I should say. Started to make the point that he's got this warning for track limits, has uh, White, but that might just be in the back of his mind. Perhaps explains why his pace has dropped off over the last lap or so. Haven't yet heard anything to suggest that he's been given a penalty for it, though. So he'll do well now, I think, just to regroup, sit in the wheel tracks of uh, David Sterling for a lap and maybe try and find a way past him right at the end of the race. Down through the curves they go. Old hairpin, slightly wider line in there taken by White should yield a bit more exit speed for the blue number 17 car. They are some 16.8 uh, seconds, by the way, behind the class leader, Carl Cavers. They uh, gained some of that advantage when we had the uh, contact between Laslett and Creswick. But, uh, well, here we go. Back up the inside. It's Coppice. Oh, there is contact between the two of them. Sterling slams the door shut uh, when White was very much there and then drives himself off the track anyway. So David Sterling will relinquish second place in the AM class. He's going to spin back onto the track, right over onto the other bit of grass on the right-hand side, and does a nice little pirouette as well. So uh, that was uh, all a little bit unnecessary, quite frankly. White uh, was up the inside. Sterling tried to close the door. There was contact, uh, and then off the road he went. So he loses second. He'll probably lose third as well now to Pelosi. And here is the replay. So he's wide up at McLean's, uh, and John White goes to the inside line. There's the contact, and uh, I don't actually think that's the reason that uh, Sterling goes off. I think he then just carries too much speed through the middle part of Coppice, dips wheel on the wet grass, and, uh, and off he went. So, uh, Harry Foster leading with a minute and 40 to go, so we will have another lap after this one. Steve Roberts drops back to eight tenths adrift that time around. So the gap's sort of ebbing and flowing a bit, but in the first sector, Roberts is quicker again on this lap. He seems to close in for a lap or so, uh, and then drop back almost as if to give himself and the car a bit of a break, and really then try and arrive back on Harry Foster's tail with a bit of momentum. Charles Clark no longer catching them, by the way. He matched the leader pretty much to the hundredth of a second last time. So four points, well, he's three and a half seconds behind Roberts. He wasn't starting the lap. And uh, so 4.3 seconds off the race lead. As I said, though, Roberts closes in through this second part of the lap and a bit wider the apex for both of them there. They're both pushing to the very limits here. And they have one more lap around the Donington Park Grand Prix circuit to go. Charles Clark there looming ever larger in the background, but Harry Foster knows the significance of winning this race. It could be enough provisionally to give him the championship with a race to spare, but uh, as I said, there is every chance the result could change after the race, so I'll update you on that before the third and final race later on this afternoon. Right now, though, Steve Roberts not really thinking about the championship. It was an outside shot for him anyway coming into this weekend, and uh, all he wants to do is try and win the race on the road, prove that he can be a regular race winner in the uh, championship, which we all know he's capable of doing, but uh, he's been uh, winning all that often this year. He had a win at Croft early in the season, and that I think is his only victory of the season so far. So Steve Roberts, only one overtake away from getting a second win of the year, but that overtake is against the potential new champion. So Harry Foster's not gonna be an easy man to get ahead of. As has been proven, Roberts has been ahead of him on a couple of occasions, but uh, not been able to hang on for more than a corner or so. Out onto the exhibition straight for the last time, then under half a lap to go. And Steve Roberts 
fractionally quicker than the leader in sector one, fractionally slower in sector two. But it's this third sector where he seems good. Overshoots the chicane a bit though, Roberts. That was a slightly clunky run over the kerbs. And that means he's not likely to be close enough into the braking zone at Melbourne to have a go. Harry Foster knows that and doesn't bother defending the inside line. That means he's got the ideal line through the corner and now I think should be home and dry. One more corner to go then. And Harry Foster, well, it's been a controversial race for several reasons, this one. But Harry Foster is going to come through to claim the victory on the road. Couple of question marks over his overtake on Steve Roberts. But he is going to win the race on the road. He takes the chequered flag. Second place for Steve Roberts. And Charles Clark comes home in third. Is that enough to keep Charles Clark in the championship hunt? Well, we'll find out. Uh, before the third race later on. Uh, fourth position will go to Matt Greenwood. And here, Carl Cavers, I can say with a bit more certainty, is about to wrap up the AM Championship because he had a decent lead over Rupert Laslett, who has not finished the race. And uh, so Carl Cavers is going to come through to claim the maximum points, 10 points uh, for the race victory. And that should now put him out of reach in the championship. Checkered flag for Carl Cavers, who was basically the only AM driver, I think, to stay completely out of trouble in that race. Uh, second place should go, here he comes, uh, to John White after his lively battle uh, with David Sterling. Sterling dropping all the way down into fourth in class after that spin at Coppice Corner. And there in the background, third in the class is Jason Pelosi, the Redline Racing driver, uh, will round out the AM podium. So Harry Foster then, race winner. 10 championship points go his way. And with Charles Clark in third scoring six points, it means there are provisionally at least 13 points between them by my maths, which is more points than are still available. But uh, until we get an official result, we'll hang fire, I think, on giving the championship to either driver. One more race to go later on this afternoon. And that could be a very, very tense affair if it turns out that Foster hasn't wrapped it up. So, Harry Foster then, the race winner, and he wins by six tenths in the end over Steve Roberts, who threw everything at that and was every bit as quick as the championship leader. Charles Clark in third, Matt Greenwood in fourth, with Carl Cavers in fifth position, winning the AM class, and I think winning the AM championship with it. Then White Pelosi after there, after White's tangle with Sterling, he still manages to hang on to second in the class. Third for Pelosi and fourth for David Sterling. With Toby Trice, Rupert Laslett, uh, non-finishing. So too, uh, Timothy Creswick and, of course, most significantly, Matthew Armstrong out after that contact with Toby Trice. So a very, very exciting, dramatic and slightly controversial penultimate round of the Porsche Visit Cayman Islands Sprint Challenge Great Britain saw a side-by-side -side battle into the first corner between Harry Foster and Matthew Armstrong with the championship leader holding on to the lead. Out wide through the dirt, though, went uh, Armstrong and that cost him places. Steve Roberts threw into second and Toby Trice came into third place. Then disaster. Contact through the Goddard's hairpin. Armstrong into the back of Toby Trice. It damaged the radiator on the championship contender his car and he slipped off on his own fluid into the barriers at Redgate Corner. He wasn't the only one. Carl Cavers had a half spin as well, the AM Championship leader. And then his championship rival, Rupert Laslett, tagged into a spin under yellow flags and that will certainly be discussed after the race. It was a brilliant battle at the head of the field. Steve, Steve Roberts did briefly get his nose ahead of Harry Foster. He led across the line and then into that yellow flag zone, Foster appeared to go back through. That wasn't the last time that Steve Roberts would be ahead of him. He got his nose up the inside into the Melbourne hairpin a few laps later and did briefly take the lead again. But he overshot the corner. Harry Foster read the situation perfectly, switched back to the late apex and got the lead and held it to the flag. There was then drama within the AM category as uh, the trading of second place ended in tears. John White uh, getting back up the inside into Coppice Corner and off onto the grass, unfortunately, uh, went his sparring partner. And David Sterling would spin across the track and finish fourth in the class. Steve Roberts tried everything he could to get back on turns with Harry Foster. Couldn't quite get there, though. So Harry Foster won the penultimate round of the championship. Is he the champion, though? We'll find out later on today.